What's up, guys? What's hey. Up? Hi. Hey. 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 So, be- sorry, no one. Go. No, I was yeah, just going to say, so because there are one, two, three, four, five, six of us in the room, or really five of us, not counting Santiago, <laughs> we have a little white and black striped tiger here that is going to be our talking animal. So okay. whoever you hear talking is going to be holding the talking animal. Yeah. We can't be trusted. Uh, <laughs> trust it. We have to make sure to, like, make eye contact and be like, hey, hey, give me that thing. I'm, yeah. I'm about to say something. You don't need it. You can talk Ready, over any of us. Uh, well, yeah, I, I'm capable of being very loud. Um, so to start with, um, who's in the room? <laughs> Oh, okay. So I have the animal now. Um, hi, my drag name is Ariel Alice. I've been doing drag for, I guess, around five years now. Five to six years, I think. Um, when I'm not a performer, my name is Anthony DeMario, and I work in Norman as a hairstylist at Salon Adache. I will now pass it along to my good Judy, a lot of Vagine. Hi, I'm a lot of Vagine. I am 22 years old. I live in Norman, Oklahoma also. I am a bartender and a makeup artist by trade. Oh, bye. <laughs> Got the good Sephora gig. Okay. <laughs> I've been doing drag for right at four years now. Yeah, four years in April. Hello, my name is Jonathan Cleveland Hindman, uh, also known as Jack Serenade Bandicamp in drag. I have been doing drag for about 10 years. And my boy gig is working at the Norman Super Target as the visual merchandiser, which is a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, this is the mascot that we had at my high school. So. <laughs> it was a white tiger. Yes. Hi, I am Crystal Beth. I'm a 20-year-old dancing Gemini here in Norman, Oklahoma. Um, by night, I am Crystal Beth. By day, I am Austin Storm. I my boy gig is I manage the Burger King inside the Riverwind Casino. <laughs> my drag name is Kinsey Scale, also known as Lee Gabriel. I was just on this podcast, and it's been <laughs> hella fun. Um, but I'm the showrunner at House Down Productions, and I'm a musician. Cool. Um. I guess to start with, I kind of asked you guys this, but uh, what what separates uh, being just a gay dude and being a person in drag? Talent. <laughs> I would say the major separation between being a gay dude and a person in drag would be, as a girl, I'm a lot more confident. Uh, like, I mean, I've grown in confidence as a boy because of drag, but I was really thin-skinned. Uh, things would get to me, but ever since I started doing drag, I, I don't let things get to me anymore. Like, if there was a zombie apocalypse, I would probably dress up in drag and <laughs> slay some zombies. Y'all could call me Michelle. Or you could just call me Jexa. That's fine, too. Uh, no one can pronounce either of those names, so it's fine. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I just feel like I have more confidence, but it actually spilled over into my boy life, giving me confidence. Daily. Uh, I think RuPaul personally said it best whenever she said that, uh, you're born naked and the rest is drag. I feel like <laughs> if you're a doctor, when you go to work and you put on a white coat, that's drag. Whatever you put on to be, like, a heightened version of yourself. Uh, my mom calls it her riot gear, like, when she goes out to the nightclubs and dances on the war bar. Pain. Yeah. Your war paint, whatever. Yeah. I feel like everything kind of is drag. And a drag queen is just like a variation of that. Um, yeah, kind of agreeing with what Jex and Alada said. There's a quote that I had heard very recently, and I wish I could remember who it was by. But the quote was, you're not anything unless you can proudly say that you are something. I feel like that's like a big difference. Is like, because I've known like, we've all known millions of little gay kids that like dress up for Halloween and they're like... <laughs> and crystal, but is it like? But that doesn't make it a drag queen. What makes you a drag queen is you know when you do it over and over again, and you're like, yes, I am a drag queen. Whenever you're actually able to say like, this is what I do. Like, I didn't just do this one night for fun. I do this because it's an art form and it's something I'm passionate about. So I think ultimately it's like the passion and the confidence and being able to just actually stand up and say, I'm a motherfucking drag queen. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Talking about. House down. <laughs> and I would also like to point out that it's not only gay dudes that yeah, do yeah, drag. Yeah. We have not multiple, but a few, so very select few straight men who do drag because they see it as a form of art, basically. Mm-hmm. Just walking art, able to take something 
from <coughs> one opposite side of the world and change it into something on the other opposite side of the world and just be completely different, but they're, yeah. they're still the same at the same time. Yeah. Uh, if you will forgive me, because I am, like, not well-versed in any terminology, and I'm just, like, a shitty, not well-rounded person in these things, and so I, I'll probably say, like, oh, like a gay dude, and be like, well, but wait, no, it's like, oh, well, I'm sorry. No, that's I, not I, a gay dude. No, gay dude. Yeah, perfectly fine. Bros. <laughs> I'm not gay. Yeah, well. Gay me people are bro. I'm not gay, I'm just big-boned. <laughs> Jessa. <laughs> I do what I can. Jessa's on tonight. I yeah. Um, <laughs> and then I guess uh, the other part is like, um, at what level is drag performance and then at what level is it a part of you and does it present itself in your everyday life? I mean, at first for me, it was all performance. I think the first time that I saw a pivot from just performance to daily life was whenever the first person came up to me and said, you know, if it wasn't for you, I don't know if I'd be here. Which I thought was really crazy, you know, just because I'm dressing up as a woman, lip syncing to someone else's song on a mm. stage, acting <laughs> out, probably losing my hair. <laughs> Let's be real. Uh, but, like, the first time someone ever came up to me and they were like, you know, honestly, like, you gave me the strength to stand up to this person at school who was making fun of me just because you did that. I think that's whenever it pivoted and that's whenever I realized that I could make a difference, even if it was just locally. I could make a difference in someone's mm -hmm. life, and I could help like change the course of their their life, you know, just by being who I am. And I thought that that was really awesome. Uh, and like I said earlier, it it kind of blended over into my real life, quote unquote, because it's given me a backbone and it's given mm -hmm. me the ability to not take things so much to heart. Because whenever you have a queen that looks busted like a lot of normally does, telling you that your eyebrows are uneven, <laughs> then obviously you know how to, like, let that roll. Like, Jinx Monsoon said water off a duck's back, so that's kind of the mantra, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> For a long time, I agree. It was very much... Drag was drag, and my personal life was my personal life, and I very much like to keep it that way, and I had this mentality that I had to be, like, a different person when I was in drag. And the longer I did it, the more I realized that my drag persona and myself are kind of the exact same thing. I feel like when I'm in drag, it's just, I'm more confident, and it's, like, a heightened version of myself and my personality. And it was probably about two years in before I realized that, and it kind of, my drag kind of spilled over into my life, and a lot of, it was making Lane a lot happier and a lot better a person. Yeah. Choices. Yeah. <laughs> um, kind of different from them. Drag for me was always like an art form, first and foremost. And like, it, like I've always been an artist, whether it was from like, shut up, all of you. <laughs> well, no, like, because art was something that was very like encouraged in my family, whether it be playing music or writing or painting or something like that. So whenever I like started picking up, whenever I started picking up like makeup brushes and things like that, it was just kind of more, it was just another thing, it was another expression of art, and it was another emotional outlet for me. And so it was never something I ever attempted to hide from anyone. My mom knew straight up the moment, like, I did it, and it was always... So my blend, it, there was never, like, a blending. It was always, like, like, the second I started doing it, I started telling, like, my coworkers or anything. I was like, yeah, guys, I'm doing shows. Like, come see it. And in its own way, I think, like... Like, everyone has, that's what's cool, that we have, like, so many of us here, because all of us have such different experiences, but it's kind of, like there's kind of a place in drag for everyone if you want to do it it doesn't matter kind of like if you want to just go out there and like finally perform if you're like oh like i just want to i like i want to just look cool and i mean because there's certainly like a lot of drag queens that just paint their face and like are like literally walking art the house down yeah the house down. <laughs> they might not go on stage and perform but they're still drag queens because they like still present themselves out there as that I, a really famous one is obviously kim chi she performs now, but I think she could have her way. She, she could have her way. She would just stand up in like the Louvre and just like look yeah. amazing and stunning. Exactly. So, I melded my drag personas out of necessity. Um, this is Lee again. Hi, he's only on another podcast, but out of necessity because, uh, as I said in my other one, I, I was given the ultimatum that I either had to dress as a girl or I had to get the fuck out. Mm. And so I tried to run away, and it didn't work out. So I had to dress as a girl. So drag came to me through necessity of having to express in feminine ways, even though I 
painted myself as a more masculine person on the inside. Um, for me, honestly, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> my drag manifested into my boy life fairly quickly. Um, I started going to school in drag, and it it was kind of like what Jexa did say. It's and what Wada said. It's kind of like it's your war paint. You, you're still the same person, but for some reason, you're creating this character. And you're giving them the type of things that you want to see in yourself, and you're able to, to do that because of drag, you know, putting on the wig, putting on the lipstick, the heels. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel invincible when I'm in drag. Yeah. I feel like I can do anything, but when I'm Austin, I can talk myself down. It's like, look, you can't jump off a bridge into the splits. It's not going to happen. <laughs> but <laughs> I can... When I started doing drag, it was... <clears throat> it was honestly, like three or four weeks after I learned to paint myself from head to toe, I, I, I did start going into to school and drag. I started, you know, every day. It wasn't, it wasn't as, I didn't see myself as transgendered. I just saw myself as I want the confidence that I have on stage to affect my everyday life. But then years after that, I realized I didn't need to get in full drag to realize that I can still carry crystal with me wherever I go. Yeah. Um... Right, Real yes. quick, I've, uh, <laughs> uh, I feel like there's a lot of terminology, and so we're, let's have like a quick little like glossary of <laughs> like, free for all. like, yeah, a good free for all <laughs> dictionary for, okay. for drag newbies. Well, what's a good place to start? Shade. <laughs> yeah, I would say shade. Shade. Yeah, shade. 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 Who wants to explain Shade. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of, a let's lot do of it in our own words. <laughs> in our own words. Well, I want to quote like Dorian Corey. That shade that comes be... from reading. Well, yeah. That's and reading funny. comes from I don't have to tell you you're ugly because you already know that you're ugly. <laughs> you know. If you've seen the movie Paris is Burning, it's a quote from there. Yes. Shade is just to me. Shade is never mean spirited. Oh, just, just is shade is just <laughs> like. I don't know, I'm a hateful person, so I may not be the right person to ask them to answer this. Because you can tell me that I'm ugly and I'm probably going to laugh and I'll be like, yeah, I'm pretty ugly, you should probably kill yourself, you know? Like, and to me, that shade is not meant to be rude, it's not meant to be awful, but it's like funny. And I would never throw shade at somebody that I didn't think could take it or somebody that didn't know me like that. I would cry. Exactly. Yeah. I would I fucking cry. I can't throw shade at Lee because Lee will honestly like just break down and cry. Yeah. There, there's some people who have that type of, you know... Tough skin that you can throw shade at. I can explain reading. All right, so reading is fundamental. Uh, yeah. Reading is, <laughs> in, in a drag sense, reading is whenever you basically just, it's like someone's a book and you're like picking out all their flaws and their imperfections. Uh, so, for instance, just looking at Ariel right now, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, what could you possibly say? <laughs> okay. So, uh, and that was a read right there, too. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it's just basically like picking apart someone's imperfections. And it's usually a little nicer than shade, I would say. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, at times it could be worse because you could read someone for Reading? filth. Yeah. Which means that you're just literally just erasing their existence off of the face of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> or you could read someone the house down, down. Yeah. which means reading with an exclamation point at the end, like a heightened, exaggerated hmm. exclamation point. <laughs> um, sorry, I just like kind of took this without asking. No, I can't. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> It's, 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 yeah, right. To me, the difference between like reading and shade is reading is to me is like the other person's obviously in on the joke. Like if you're just like, yeah. like there's a difference. Like if I looked at Jexa and I was just like, wow, I really fucking hate how you look. <laughs> like that's just being like that's just being rude and being a bitch. But yeah. if I was just like, if I was like Jexa, you're looking really orange today. Yeah. How many bags of Doritos did you eat? Then so that's obviously not like a good example. That wasn't funny at all. But, <laughs> I thought it was pretty hilarious. But I mean, that's, you. Right? <laughs> but like that's it. seeing that right there. Like that's kind of more reading where yeah. you're like joking. Where it's more of a joke, and it's like obviously like we're still picking apart each other. But you're making the other person laugh. If you're just being mean, that's just being mean and being rude. And that's kind of going more into like throwing shade. It's just kind of like <laughs> like you're, like you're actually insulting someone. We're reading. Right. You're they're more in on the joke. Yeah, basically. Agreed. Free for all. Grab it. <laughs> <laughs> and then another phrase that I think, I mean, because gays in general speak in sound effects. She has the thing. I don't care. Yeah. Gays in general speak in sound effects. So, sound effects uh, and hand motions. Sound effects. So there's like the tongue pop uh, made famous by Alyssa Edwards. And that's just basically a 
That's just like a punctuation. It's like yeah. a period. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, that's the end of my sentence. Like, like yes, God, I, it's bye. Yeah. Yeah. And there's <laughs> something that there. started uh, a few years ago that's kind of died out, uh, but it actually started by the late great Maya Mokimon, and it was boop. Uh, so, for instance, if anyone <laughs> said me, do you remember boop? I, I, I still yeah. remember. Yeah. I'll be like boop. <laughs> so, like, if, if someone would like okay. do something or say something that was unwanted or unwarranted, like you would just be like boop. <laughs> like, because it's like, I'm done, I'm, I don't want to talk to you, like, I don't want to hear from you, like, stop talking. My favorite thing is I'm voting for Donald Trump for president. <laughs> 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 Gotta go. <laughs> so, and you always have to draw it out. Uh, who wants to discuss tea? Because I think that's important. I have a different yeah. terminology I would like to explain, not tea, though. Okay, well, I'll explain to you. I'm going to forget mine. <laughs> oh, you're going to forget yours? Yeah. Go. Shotgun mug. Oh my god, no! <laughs> Shotgun oh my god. mug. Look oh at it. God. There's a mirror right there. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Shotgun mug was introduced to me by Lee. Um, it was, it's very large in the Seattle drag community. Basically. Well, if, you, if, you well. have, if you have a shotgun mug, it basically means like you're ugly, your face is painted horribly, you don't know what you're doing with a makeup brush, Ariel Alice. Like we have all these multiple. I'm the only one wearing makeup right now. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> but that's shotgun mug, and that's something you don't hear a lot. Um, and I so why feel you like, talk about it? Because I want it to come through. I think it's funny. Through. It's yeah, cute. It's, it's funny. I think I want it to come through the it's Oklahoma totes community. Totes of Probes. Exactly. It's another Seattle one. But okay, you want to do <laughs> tea? Yeah, I want to explain Shotgun Mug a little more, though. What's the tea? <laughs> so you're talking so to Mary. Mary. The tea about... Mary. Yeah, I'm talking to my mom. I'm talking Ew. to Zeta. I love my mom. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Shotgun Mug comes from... Like, it's actually one that my friend... My friend introduced me to, um, but it's one. Uh, well, my ex friend. <laughs> um, but it's one. It's uh, it means like you know, like when you shoot the barrel of a shotgun, mm -hmm. and then all the powder yeah. just flies across your face. <laughs> Did you say that? No. No, I that's what. It, so that's what a shotgun mug is. Like yeah, as, yeah. as she said, like when you take a brush and you just do whatever on your face, mm. and it looks busted as fuck. <laughs> right. That shotgun mug. It's like all the powder just. Flew onto your face with no rhyme or reason to it. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to explain tea. So, tea means truth or trouble. So, what's the tea would be like, what's up? What's the truth? Mm -hmm. We're going to spill some real tea here. Yeah. We're going to spill that hot tea all over the place <laughs> and sip on that hot tea, that hot truth, and tell you guys all about drag. Yeah. <laughs> Diet green tea, if you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By tea, we mean lesbian sex. We're having hot tea. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. <clears throat> um, so then, oh jeez, I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I, I try to like listen, and so, uh, I, while listening, I try to formulate other questions, but then through listening, I, I don't formulate other questions, <laughs> so I just ran out of questions, but I did just remember what it was, and since, uh, you guys are sort of talking about reading and, uh, I would like you guys to read me. Let's I go. mean, give us something hard. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the first one. I'm not going to... I only read people I like. Oh, <laughs> bitch. Basically. Oh my gosh, she must love me. <laughs> yeah, <Yay>. secret lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> there's, really, there's really nothing to read you about, I don't think. Just mm. because, like, I mean, you're well-presented... You know, like your hair is nice. <laughs> I mean, it's like a little messy, no, I mean, but I mean, it's better than mine. I mean, you you look presentable. So I mean, I don't think we would read you. Now, the first time you get in drag, best believe. If oh, you oh yeah, you, yeah. Sure. We're going yeah. to read you the house down. Actually, a lot of reading it has to be kind of personal and like yeah. yeah so I mean, if we don't if you don't know someone, we, it's kind of sure, like, sure, hard sure, to sure. read. Like we could read you, which is based off like this third grader room you have set up. But <laughs> <laughs> it looks like the Unabomber lives in here. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I will read myself by saying, even if you don't do drag, I will probably have you be one of my drag children. <laughs> so this is, this is the truth. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the tea. Out, right? The tea. I think I've ever had the pound. Are you kidding me? I live there. I am the curator of the pound. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, because to be honest, like, Teenage. I could see you guys reading. Anyways, <laughs> yeah. I saw you pointing at my amazing fantasy poster, my Bender poster, whatever. I, I, like, Bender. I like the Wally. The Wally's cute. Uh, yeah, I was the little Wally. I was also gagged for the. Uh, I like the giraffe. Well. <laughs> the pop over there because like is that Eva? Uh, yeah. Is she well, a pop? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like had moved it, but uh, Lee, you know me best out of anyone in here. 
Can Give me some shit. <laughs> Give me some shit. You are the reason that I converted to lesbianism. Oh! oh! <laughs> Probably not the first time he's heard that, honestly, it didn't phase him much. Um, what's some of the, uh, stuff that, uh, you probably deal with in drag that people probably know a lot about, but just, uh, how it's sort of hit you hard? I mean, so the, some tiger must um, be passed there. <laughs> I mean, you have something. I mean, I did have something, but but I lost it, like oh. my title. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't gonna say anything, but um, I guess something that kind of hits something that's kind of like a little I don't I don't know if offensive trigger, whatever you want to call it. But something that really bothers me, I guess, about like how people kind of view drag. I'll go ahead and say it. Mostly like the straight or curious men are whenever they, like, hit you up on Facebook and, like, immediately in, like, the first two minutes are like, so, like, will you dress up for me? Oh. And that is oh so God. incredibly, like, disrespectful on so many <laughs> levels. A, because, like, again, like, to all of us, like, this is, like, our jobs or this is our art. Like, that's something incredibly, like, kind of personal and private or something we take a lot of pride in. So for you to kind of view it as a sexual fetish is very degrading, mm -hmm. and you're literally saying that it's more important... Because then when you tell them no, they get really offended uh, by it. Mm. Oh, yeah. And so to them, it's like it's more important for them to live out their sexual fantasy than to respect you as a person and as an individual. And, and respect, an artist. Yeah, yeah and, and as an artist. artist. And so that's something that really bothers me is anytime I get like, or anytime I like think I'm making a friend and then it's like, and, and then like a couple of weeks down the road, they're like, so like, can you like dress up? And like, and I'm like, no, like I thought I like made like a good friend or like I thought I had like a potential relationship and then no, you just want me to be a girl for you, and that's not what I want to do with my life. Yeah. So that's something that really gets me, gets my goats going. <laughs> something that I didn't realize happened until I did drag was people catcalling people. I didn't. I thought that was like yes. a thing in the oh movies. My gosh. I didn't time. know it was a real thing. Men are disgusting. They, yeah, they are. Men are fucking pigs. Yeah. No. You're a pig. No, yeah. Men are fucking <laughs> pigs. Yes, yeah. And literally, I will get catcalled, and I'm always like, oh my god. Do I say anything? Do I make my voice higher? Do I make it lower? I'm oh, I always like, thank you. I'm like, always like, trying to say that. I've been walking into my apartment <laughs> and get catcalled by drunk guys, and I'm look me up on Instagram at the Lady Alada. I don't look like a woman. Nice yeah. plug. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how to be like. Look at me right now. I'm not a woman, you know. <laughs> okay. But um, I don't look like a woman. I feel like I'm very obviously a man who is very um, dressed up. Yeah. yeah. When okay. I'm in drag, and agreed. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Only and handsome. Oh, pretty handsome. Um, <laughs> what is that hair? <laughs> and so they just see a woman, questionable, walking, and they're just like, they see it like as an orifice, and I'll get like yelled at and thing, and like catcalled. And I didn't realize that catcalling was a real thing. I thought it was like a movie something thing happens. until I started doing drag. Absolutely. It was something I'd never experienced before or seen. Uh, just to snowball on top of that, my favorite thing to do is whenever you get catcalled, is being like, what? Like, just really manly and really loud. Touchdown! That's what I used to do in the city whenever I used to be at Club Albi, like, back in the day whenever I was 17, before I was even old enough to get in there in the first place. Yeah, people would be like, oh my god! And I'd be like, what are you talking about? Like, I would just really like, it was fun. I think one of the things that upsets me, I think, the most about drag, uh, is the fact that people automatically assume that I am not happy with being a boy. Oh, my that gosh, I automatically, right the they automatically assume that I, you know, have, like, this, this, just, I don't know, like, there's this inability to decide or determine who I want to be. So they think that I, I either want to be a girl or I want to be a boy. Uh, and I mean, no. Like, I do drag for different reasons, I think, than a lot of people. Uh, I do drag for the role model aspect that I was talking about earlier, because I do know that whenever I was younger, I came from a really small town in rural Oklahoma called Union City. Uh, I graduated with 22 amazing homely people. <laughs> and uh, so obviously, like, you know, going to the rec room was a, a way for me to get away from that, you know, conservative Bible Belt town where literally there were more churches than there were houses and people. Uh, so that was just my way to escape. And I mean, my dad was a minister... Uh, my parents are deaf, so they're kind of close-minded, just a little bit. My dad's also blind, so he's even worse. Uh, and, you know, I grew up, like, religiously and ethnically Hebrew, so, like, Jewish. 
uh, but I also grew up Southern Baptist as well. So, I mean, it was like a kind of a mixture. So the rec room was my home away from home. It was where I could be myself. And I looked up to the Queens because, you know, they were not just out, but they were proud about who they were. Like, they didn't care. So, like, that's why I started doing drag. And I just, I, I kind of feel like a lot of people don't understand that. Like, they see you in drag and they're like, oh, you're, you're trans. You yeah. want to be a girl. And, I mean, that's not, that's not how it is with me. And, I mean, I don't really think that's how it is. I mean, trans is who you are. Drag is what you do. Yeah. And I think a lot of people muddy that. Like, they think that, oh, because you dress like this, you want to be this. Uh, and I also just like kind of gender fucking everything anyway, just because, I mean, I want it to be as socially acceptable for a guy to walk down the street, you know, in a dress as it is for a girl to walk down the street in her boyfriend's clothes, you know, so that's just kind of who I am and that's what I think. Long live the rec room. <laughs> <laughs> um, to go a little bit political here. Jesus. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, God. Um, yeah. Even in the Multiple gay community, there's things. still a whole bunch of um, hatred towards drag queens. Um, in modern day society, the Black Lives movements, the, I mean, the far right winged white men look at that as something that's, you know, stupid that doesn't need to be there or anything mm -hmm. like that. And that's not how all, but how some gay men see drag queens as there's no reason for that. This is stupid. That's ugly. Stop doing this. You're a boy. Mm -hmm. Mask for mask type stuff. Like, and it, it, it really sucks to be standing in this community who walks on Washington 24-7 saying we deserve the same rights as everyone else, but we're still going to take down others in our own community. Mm. It, it really sucks. It, it's hurting everybody. It's Drag queens are kind of just below the belt in some yeah. gay people views, and it, it just it hurts. Um, to kind of piggyback off what she was saying, because there is like a very important point, if it wasn't for drag queens... And more importantly, black trans women, we would not have. Still not right. yeah. We wouldn't have yeah. like we wouldn't be where we are today. Exactly. exactly. And it was yeah, it was a black trans woman slash drag. I think I'm pretty sure she did drag. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes. Marsha P. Johnson. Yes. yes. Yeah. She threw the first stone. So if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have it. So all these like all these quote unquote masks for masks, the people that kind of talk down to drag queens. It's kind of like I always want to look at them and be like, do you realize if it wasn't for like this drag queen culture, you would probably be in a like trans concentration uh, camp. <laughs> whole night, um, the, yes. uh, what's it called? The conversion conversion therapy yeah. camps. Thank you. I was like the trans period orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the, the cello. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, another thing, uh, just to piggyback off that as well. <laughs> Let's all piggyback. Is, there is oh my god! Sorry, <laughs> mom, you're on a podcast. <laughs> Yay! No one asked you to be here. Oh, god. You're not oh, holding the tiger, so... Yeah, she's not holding the tiger. Get out of here. So. Okay. Well, um, I'll call you back because we're on a podcast, but do you have anything to say to the people about drag? Um, it is a wonderful art form, and come on, see our next show! And you suck at it! Woo! <laughs> okay, talk to you later. You suck at it! <laughs> <laughs> Text Get me. Get some meals. Okay, love you all. Love you, too. Love, love you. you. Bye. Bye. Hate you. <laughs> okay, so... What I was saying before I was really interrupted by my drag daughter <laughs> is that uh, I think there's just a lot of a lot of ignorance in mm -hmm. our community. I mean, mm -hmm. you have these affluent white gays who feel like, you know, oh, well, the fight is over because we have marriage equality. And they don't understand that, I mean, they kind of put other causes on the back burner. I mean, bi erasure happens, and that's something that I, I hate. I mean, bisexuality does exist. And it just drives me crazy whenever people say, oh, you need to pick one and stick with it. No. Uh -huh. Like, there's a spectrum. You know, like, it's like a Kinsey scale. That's my bad name. Don't uh, it out. And, like, there's a spectrum. And just as there is a spectrum for sexuality, there's a spectrum for gender. And I also think it's irritating that trans rights get put on the back burner as well mm -hmm. for these, you know white homosexuals that are like, oh, well, I can get married now, so I don't care. I mean, of course, now they're under fire and they're a little worried, I think, because of the current administration. But then you have people like Milo or whatever his name is that, you know, they don't really care either way <laughs> just because they just want to watch the world burn. But I just think it's irritating that, you know, a lot of people in our community don't understand or don't want to at least, like, sympathize uh, with the struggles that other people can be facing. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't want to put themselves in that position. Maybe it's empathize, not sympathize. Yes. You get it. Uh, <laughs> but they don't want to put themselves in that situation. And I think, you know, as a minority, 
I think that we should, you know, put out literally (laughs) I think as a minority that we should understand and we should come from a place of understanding and of compassion for anyone who falls into the spectrum of the LGBTQA Mm -hmm. IA IA etc I know my ABCs Uh, (laughs) yes Uh, so yeah that's something that really irritates me as well as gay people, I really feel like we're a family. I've always had the mentality that, like, any time I'm around a gay person, that, like, they're family to me. Because we have, like, a common something that isn't common. We're both minorities, and we both come from the same thing. And even though when we come from different backgrounds, we do have, like, a common ground with each other. And like you said, a lot of people think that just because something doesn't apply to them, that it's not important or it doesn't matter. And I, that really hurts my heart to hear that from people. Yeah. I agree. Um... What do you guys think is the most fun part about doing drag? The performance. <laughs> <laughs> just, just getting on stage and being able to dance or show art or sing or do whatever. Just being able to just completely and 100% express yourself no matter how you feel. You're just able to do it. It's just freedom. Yeah. It, I think my favorite thing about drag <laughs> that I've experienced in, you know, the decade that I've been doing it is the connections, the, the familial connections, uh, the friend connections, uh, just, I mean, cause I am the matriarch of the Vandekamps, <laughs> you know, I had to throw that in there. Oh, I know. Uh, and I think just having these people in my life, like in my life, I have so many, <laughs> just having these people in my life, I think just really made a difference, you know, like these are people that... <laughs> Why does he look so crazy? <laughs> I love him. Uh, these are people that, you know, have, that I've depended on and they've depended on me. I know at one point, at least all of my kids have lived with me at one point just because and grandkids. they, yeah, and grandkids, <coughs> uh, because they didn't really have anywhere else to go. And I think that honestly, that just kind of made it better because our drag families are kind of like a defense mechanism in Oklahoma. Uh, because we do live in the Bible Belt, so people do get kicked out for just being who they are. So uh, I think that's probably my favorite thing about drag is the the bonds that you get with people that you interact with. Well, you're this the best roommate I've ever had. Well, thanks. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Ariel, do you I have warrants. Do you want the yeah. down sensitive thing? Go ahead. The symptoms you can have it. That's okay. fine if she has something to say. Brian. My favorite part is being able to get out my like artistic expression because I feel like the, the worst artist in the world because I feel like a really artistic person and I have a really artistic brain, but I can't sing or play any instruments or draw or paint. Or do drag. Um, I, I mean, I'm awful at doing drag, but I mean, here we stand, you know. Here we sit. Here we sit. I'm here in this room. Sitting. Yeah, sitting. <laughs> you want your things. Yeah. So there you go. You have that. <laughs> no, my favorite part is being able to get out my artistic expression and like things I see in my brain. I went from like trying to paint or doing whatever to like visualizing like silhouettes or visualizing like makeup looks or things like that and being able to make those or put those on my face or like move my body a certain way to execute that. It's probably my favorite part. Yeah. Hold well, on. <laughs> You found him? (laughs) I haven't talked to him for years. How is he? How is my father, the sperm donor? (laughs) Um, My favorite part of drag is actually... (laughs) um, Probably, even though I'm like an incredibly introverted person and I normally hate talking to people, but for some reason in drag I love like right after you perform and like going out into the crowd and talking or like in between like intermission or after a show and just talking to like people, especially like coming from the rec room which was an underage club and then at Resonator we're an all age thing like you like get to see like these like kids i mean they are our kids too i'm about to be 25 and these kids are probably like 10 years younger than me damn and they're like i know i'm old right yeah shut you, up how you, how you, <laughs> shut up it's like seeing them and seeing them like, their story. eyes light up and they're like this is so cool like we don't get to see this like we don't get to and you know like they're connecting to it and they haven't figured that out yet like what it is that they're connecting with but you see in their eyes where they're like like they love they like they love finally seeing something different in Oklahoma and they love finally seeing something that they connect to and that makes me really happy and that's probably like because I hate getting in drag I hate getting out of drag I hate wearing heels all the time but this, I hate you people I hate <laughs> you <laughs> about it but seeing like seeing people light up and seeing like your art be validated is probably my favorite part is actually 
see, yeah, exactly. Seeing your art get validated and seeing people respond emotionally to it. Change of people's life. <laughs> if I can just change one little cross dresser's heart, I've done my part. Well, I've done my part. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Next question. Or can <laughs> yeah. Um, just to piggyback off of really what um, Jexa and Ariel are saying, the connections that you make with people within the community and within the audience are my favorite and most fun part of drag. There was this really sweet moment during the Resonator Planned Parenthood benefit for House Down Productions that I really, really loved. And that was, um, he, you didn't know this, Jexa, at the time, but that guy, um, this guy who's actually my cousin's husband, he's the sweetest guy ever, but he looks like this, like, burly old big cowboy uh, right and he was yeah and he yeah. was wearing an osu jacket mm -hmm. yeah, and he was in norman and jexa said oh i like your jacket um <laughs> on the mic i did and he said and he said oh i'm well i'm in the wrong side of town to be wearing this because osu is stillwater and ou is norman and it's mm -hmm. a big college town and jexa goes oh no no you're not on the wrong side of town everyone's welcome here yeah and that was like a really really touching moment yeah <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, oh my gosh! Yeah, it, its face is is really yeah. something. Yeah, we're talking about the the little <laughs> yeah the little the white tiger yeah. that we're passing <laughs> around. It it's is like... yeah, it is well. Uh, <laughs> um, real quick, like logistical question: What do you do with your dick? Where does uh, it go? You tuck. You tuck. So basically, or you don't. You alternatively, or you free ball like you're cool. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, basically, no time. what what tucking is comprised of, I mean, I guess it's different, just wherever you are. Uh, if you're an attractive person, we will tell you that we're going to teach you how to tuck because we want to see your junk. Uh, <laughs> Santiago, do you want to learn how to tuck? <laughs> so, uh, I'm married, I'm sorry. Uh, so, <laughs> to the tucker. He's not single. Damn. So, I, you're single. I'm single. You're single. I'm the only single one. Yeah. Ariel was like, here no, in the next room. We but time to we, teach the you've children. You've been there before, and you change sexuality. Let's not go. Through. Yeah, I was gonna say they're gonna take you in the next room and so, you're gonna teach you how to tuck, and they're gonna both come out lesbians. <laughs> oh, I thought that we were talking about Santiago. Oh, <laughs> so right. tucking is uh, where you stick your uh, nuts, if you will, <laughs> up into up into their, their little. Uh, they have like a little pocket thing, like in where your... they are before you hit puberty. Yeah, 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 basically. So you stick them back there, so they're gonna go to their winter cabin, and then you. <laughs> Take your, your shaft, however long, or in Crystal's case, short it may be, <laughs> and you just kind of pull it back, and you just kind of, like, go and with that. Tape. Some Secure people, some people you, use yeah, duct tape, some, some people, people use a gaff. gaff. Uh, which is ma it's printed, yeah, just made out of fabric. It just yeah. holds it kind of everything in place. I wear a gaff. Yeah. And then, I actually don't tuck at all, honestly. I, I just yes. wear so many pairs of pantyhose that you can. I wear short <laughs> shorts. It's just, just like, like a fringe and a blends in. Yeah. yeah, just, yeah, totes. <laughs> I haven't shaved in years. Uh, yeah, so that's how you tuck. Um, and then I guess the other question is just like, um, nope, I lost it. It, it was in there and then, and then it's gone. Uh, question. <laughs> yep. It's Excellent. a terrible question. Uh, <laughs> someone vamp for me while I, while I think of the, the What question. is everyone's least favorite thing about the drag community? Like, in its Oh, mouth. bitch. Oh, God. It's getting real. We're spilling the tea. Okay, Jackson okay, so. answered me. <laughs> okay, yes, so go. Um, I hate the fact that when you perform at one place, and there are multiple other places to perform, and you perform at that one place, and you do something to upset one of the other people there, that whole news gets spread through the entire community. Oh, like, yeah. Very than small like, town. Very small town. Type-esque. Type it's, it's, um, <laughs> it's hard for a performer, like myself, I'm not 21 yet, so I can't, <laughs> I can't perform <laughs> at um, bars and things like that, so I have a very small place to perform, which is, I mean, right now is a resonator at, in Norman. Yeah. But people who work at bars and people like bar owners, they already have a perception and I, an idea of who I am because of past performances in other places. And I think that's really shitty because you should only be able to understand a person when you're talking to them right in front of you. Yeah. It's, it's bad to have like those misconceptions. I think the thing that makes me mad, I'm about to go on a rant. Um, hey, bitch. I think the thing that You're makes tired. me the most mad the about is our around. community in specific is the fact that we have people since I was younger who were like, oh, the youth is our future. Like, we care about them. We love them. We care. 
we love them, da 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 we're going to do whatever we can to make sure that they're okay. I'm the former Miss Rec Room, I care. And then whenever they shut the Rec Room down, literally none of them cared. Uh, I think there's probably a handful of us former Miss Rec Rooms who were actually affected by this in a, neg in a negative way. Uh, and we actually tried to do something about it. But I just think it's really sad, you know, that you have people who are in control of these, these venues, who are in control of these shows, who want to talk a big talk, but whenever time comes to walk the big walk, they don't. They literally just fall on their faces. And uh, I just think that's probably, like, that's one of the biggest issues I have. Because now, you know, during this Trump administration, we don't have a place, uh, really, for the LGBT youth to go. Uh, whenever we get, you know, put back into where we were probably in like the 90s or early thousands with being, you know, queer youth, they say it's not going to happen. I mean, hopefully it doesn't. But if it does get to that point, where are these kids going to go? Uh, so that's my main concern. And it's, it's just really unfortunate, I guess, that people in our community who wanted to act like they cared just really showed that they didn't. The only thing they care about is, you know, advancing their own career. Or their paychecks, so. Do you want to drop a name? I'm not going to say any names. <laughs> <laughs> I have quite a few, though. Uh, probably my least favorite so thing bad. is um, drag queens, like, ghettoizing almost other drag queens who have, like, different views or ideas of mm -hmm. drag. Like, like I said, drag is my art, and drag is what I do, and I don't do drag to be competitive, and I don't do drag to compete against other people. And some people, especially in this region of the country, pageant drag is a big thing if you've never okay. seen. If you've never seen a drag pageant, it's fun, it's What's great, that? but I think that a lot of people take it way too seriously, and they think that if you don't do have a crown on your head, then you're not anybody in the drag scene, and that really bothers me. She's never one shit. Called. Exactly. Don't you have a crown? I do. I, and I kind of went along with that. When I first turned 21, I started doing pageants. <laughs> I started doing pageant because I honestly thought that's just what you, you had to do. Yeah, and incredible. honestly, it killed drag for me. I, I got really resentful of drag. And it. I almost quit doing drag. I quit doing drag for about six months because it just wasn't fun to me anymore. And I didn't enjoy it. And I wasn't getting out what I wanted to do and doing things that I wanted to do. Yeah. And... I just hate that it has to be that way, and that people have, like, a closed-minded... We're men in dresses, and the fact that you want to be closed-minded about the way that we're dressing or what we're doing is completely mind-boggling to me. <laughs> I feel like what we're doing is revolutionary enough and, like... What is the word I'm looking for? Like, shocking enough. Yeah. That who cares what we're wearing or what Beyoncé song we're lip-syncing to, like... Exactly. <laughs> Beyoncé makes too. The fact that people take it so seriously, really, I hate it. It drives me insane. No. Your ending was literally like what my beginning was going to be is like I hate how I do I, I don't hate that's a strong word but it really does bother me like how serious people <laughs> how serious like a lot of drag queens take it and I get it because it is like an art and at a certain point it does become part of your identity so whenever you challenge someone's identity of course they're going to get a little up in arms about it but it's exactly it's <laughs> we're we are about it. Mass, we are male individuals. We were assigned to the M at birth, and now we're like dressing up as the opposite gender. So it's kind of like it's the we're kind of being satire. We're make, we're poking fun at society. So, but how how can we sit there and be like, oh, like poking fun at all this other stuff? But then like, if you see someone not wearing pads, you're they're immediately on your shit list and you're immediately like on their ass. Like, girl, why the fuck aren't you wearing pads? Why the fuck aren't you doing this? And it's like, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that I had to have you validate me in order to be a good performer. Right. But so many people, that's how it is. It's like, if you're not what they want you to be, then they're just going to shit talk you. And it's like, I just came here to have a good time. I came here to make people very attacked. I'm feeling very attacked. That's literally how it is. I'm here. I just came here to like enjoy myself. I came here to perform. I came here to make people laugh. I came here to make some money. I didn't come here to have you judge me. People if I true. wanted to be judged, I would do a competition or do a pageant. Right. And lose. Uh, I think <laughs> Except I won my contest. <laughs> so, all of them. Well, yeah. Uh, I think, honestly, uh, but to snowball on top of that, I do have to say that I am guilty of that. I am guilty of judging, we all are, judging a girl because she's not yeah. wearing hips or judging a girl because yeah. she's not wearing... But, I mean, and I'm not making excuses for myself. My mind has opened, you know, in, in years past. But I do come from a class of, of queens and entertainers that 
that was the, like, norm. Like, you had to. Like, if you didn't, you weren't even allowed on the stage. Right. So, uh, but I mean, obviously, as, you know, years progress, art progresses, you know, it's ever-evolving. Uh, things in this world are never meant to, I don't think, stay constant. I think that things are supposed to change. Drag, like any art form, is evolutionary. Uh, so, what might have been more acceptable for me at my start ten years ago would be different from someone else's who's starting today. Like, it might be something that, you know, they like that androgyny effect, or that, you know, whatever, I guess I like to say gender fuck. that's just my favorite thing to say. Ombre brow with a nude lip. Exactly. <laughs> you could at me. Okay. <laughs> at the Lady Alana on Instagram. Uh, or at Jackson Renee, you know, that's me. R E N E. Uh, but, yeah, like, I mean, I, but I do think that it does take just getting to know someone and becoming friends with someone who you view as different than yourself. Uh, because obviously if you run around in the same circles your entire life, you're going to do nothing but literally run around in circles. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I think it's better to broaden your horizons and to, you know, do something a little more linear. Exactly. And people are going to be different. And I think that you just need to accept that. And I would never ever tell somebody that just because they do things differently than me, that they're not doing drag. Exactly. Or what they're doing is wrong. Exactly. And in the words of my good friend, accept me for who I am. I can't be you. You, you can't be, be me. me. <laughs> we can live like a... We can be me. You! Uh, oh, whip crack. You are ugly. <laughs> I do what I can. Yeah, but it, like, I mean, like you said, we were all kind of prone to that kind of uh, quote unquote hatred of another queen because they don't have the same identity. Well, I raised you like that. So. Uh, you, you, you <laughs> and all of us come kind of from different schools of drag. I feel. Exactly. Like, oh yeah. Like when when I first met Ariel, I had very strong opinions about her. Did you? When Did met, you? <laughs> when I first met I Alana, those I had very strong opinions about them, and it was it took me to hit the the lowest of the low from getting to crown from the dark room to realize, you know. I'm they really not. are shitty people. <laughs> <laughs> they really are ugly. You know, like, the drag I've been taught is not the end-all be-all. Like, I don't, it doesn't really matter if you're wearing hips. It doesn't really matter if you're doing a sexy Beyonce song and you're not being sexy. It's just, you are a performer, and that's just who you are, and you should respect everyone for having the courage just to step on that stage. And I would like to state for the record that Ariel and I have known each other the longest out of everyone in this room. <laughs> it's true. Huh. Um, well, except probably Leah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure. No, we knew each other whenever we were in My school, ex. Like, my no, ex we, boyfriend. We, we were in it. utero, like, Skyping each other. Okay, well, you were in utero, I was, like, 15. <laughs> well, yeah. well, right. In preschool, Ariel's, like, putting Crayola on her eyelids. <laughs> and I was the teacher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, um, um, good. Um, Oh my God. Crystal and I are allowed to have our come together moment. Um, I mean, because yeah, there, there are things that like, and everyone has like an idea of what drag is. Like one of my biggest pet peeves, I love, I love everyone, but one of my and I know I tried to never say it out loud, but I will whisper in a lot of his ears as I'll be like, as I'll be like, why the fuck are they not wearing heels? You're in motherfucking drag. Why are you? That's not me. <laughs> yeah. I, have never, I have never, ever, ever worn flats for any show besides the time I did like a dude, ever, <laughs> ever. And so, ever. like, but yeah, like everyone's guilty. Yeah, I, and I'm like, I I, like, I'm obviously like still like I'm no better than anyone else. But I'm we still, all have our like pet peeves. Yeah, we all have. Our I parents. like not wearing heels is a big thing for me. When people have shotgun mug, that's a big thing for me because I spend a lot of time on my makeup. So and yourself? I spent a long time. I spent a long time being ugly. Yeah. Okay, trust and believe. I was ugly Until for a long time. Until three minutes ago. It takes a yeah, lot exactly. of time to look that bad. The timer is ticking, okay? It takes a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. A lot of time. To look that bad. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but no, yeah, so I mean, like, and obviously, like, without getting into it, because no one really cares, like, Jack, oh, not Jack's a fuck. Jexa. Jexa. Jexa 2.0. Jexa 2.0. Pretty much. Jexa the remix. Um, <laughs> no, yeah. Crystal and I, like, in the beginning, didn't like each other. We had very different, like, opinions. I feel like everyone just runs hate Crystal Beth at one point in time or another. Yeah, I was I uh, kind of a bitch when I first started. But I feel like I like, came a long way. Uh, I also feel like you have come a long way. Thank you. Well, no, it's like, like, I'm really upset that this you. is being recorded. I know. <laughs> it's the only time you're going to hear me say it. Probably. I'll just, that's going to be your ringtone for now on. <laughs> Girl, who, what are you calling? you for anything. Hello. <laughs> 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 fuck, where was he even going with this? You, hated you were me. saying that you didn't. Oh yeah, but I mean it is kind of like, now I I hope it's more of like a joke that we hate each other. Yeah, I it hope really it's is. more of a joke that, <laughs> like I see you and I'm like, fuck who invited her. <laughs> exactly, it's like, oh okay, you added her to the group chat for like, real. Oh shit. God. <laughs> oh, my well God. I think the best joke other than y'all hating each other would have to be your respective careers. 
If I can share quite possibly one of the best stories on the planet, it it's not a good reflection on your character. I, that's fine. But it was I've okay. A lot so so Crystal, before. Crystal, and I competed on the first season of of Non Repulsive. <laughs> 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 yes, we, we spread the rumor. You can follow me know. on Crystal. There's the last season, and then there's the extra <laughs> last season. Rec Room Idol. Of Rec Room Idol, and there was one time after the show, I. Our cars were parked very close to each other, and Jesus. Crystal was having an argument with one of the other contestants. And uh, who? I don't know. It was Marinara. Oh fuck uh, her! Yeah, and, <laughs> Marinara Taylor. And so, like, I I had a red Volkswagen Beetle at the Should time. I put my I put my stuff in the Beetle, and I just sat there and I just watched them yell at each other. My favorite argument, or my favorite ever thing to this day, was you yelled. You yell like your pasta sauce, your face pasta sauce or something, and she just goes, "Yeah, I'm pasta sauce. I'm gonna throw this marinara all up in your face." <laughs> and I was on the floor laughing so hard, and I was amazed. Like, any that's tacky. And these two men in dresses <laughs> screaming at each other in the ground, yelling about pasta, yelling food insults at each other. And I was like, after this point, any insult thrown at me that is not a food insult is unvalid. Yes. <laughs> invalid. Yes, that is lovely. <laughs> Um, to sort of negate the uh, negativity about pet peeves in drag, <laughs> what uh, what makes uh, your scene, what makes House Down unique? I would say at the... one point we all hated each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this was a coming I together never show. Anybody, yeah. <laughs> I would say what makes us unique is the fact that I mean we're all different. I think I think that we're all like we all have like we said we all have different classes or styles of drag. Uh, you know you have. Thanks. You have the dancing queens like Kinzada and Crystal. I don't really classify myself as that anymore. <laughs> it's been a while. Or, uh, no. or ever. Anymore. Uh, and then, I mean, you have like your more like avant garde, uh, I guess is what I would call you. Uh, <laughs> and, then you have, your and then you have your, your trailer trash, like a lot of Absolutely. Uh, and porcelain. And porcelain. And then you have your, I don't even know what kind of animal livestock something with Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have, you and then you have your truly your stand-up comedian, just debutant test. Ew, uh, <laughs> oh my god! Can't be booped. <laughs> okay, can't be booped. <laughs> can't be booped. <laughs> Get your own hashtag. Up. Hashtag can't be booped. <laughs> okay, can't be booped. Uh, I'm just kidding. No, but I think that you know, as a collective, I think that we all give something different. I mean, we're all on the spectrum of what drag I think represents, not just to us, but that could ultimately represent at all. Uh, We're all on the Kinsey scale scale. Exactly. <laughs> and then as we start bringing in, uh, like, special guests and, you know, entertainers that are not usually a part of our troupe, I think that will just intensify mm -hmm. that just diversity. And that'll just create, you know, more for the audience to see, like, okay, there's more to this. There's got to be more than this provincial line. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> well, all right then. Um, down the row, we're going to just plug your stuff. Lee. Hi, um, my name is Lee. You can find me at Kinsey Scale on Facebook, and you can like House Down Productions. That's spelled H-A-U-S, Down Productions, on Facebook. Um, I am Crystal Beth. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all at Crystal Beth. Um, I also have a merchandise at dragqueenmerch.com <laughs> forward slash Crystal Beth. I have t-shirts and tank tops you can buy. Um, and yeah, I also have a YouTube channel, which is, again, at Crystal Beth. Um, I also collab with uh, Jax's YouTube channel, the Vanny Camp House. VDK family. VDK drag family. VDK family. VDK drag family. VDK drag family. You can look up um, all the Vanny Camps drag family YouTube, and then I have my single one as well. Uh, well, my name is Jonathan, aka Jack. Uh, you can find me at Facebook uh, or on Facebook <laughs> at Facebook at uh, Jonathan Ray Cleveland Hindman, and if you need to know how to spell Sorry. that. 
Uh, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> or Jexa Renee Vandekamp. I'm also on Instagram. I am also on Snapchat. I had a Twitter for a while, deleted it. There was a MySpace one day, I don't know. Uh, but yes, please, 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 please like uh, House Down Productions. Uh, or you could also like Jexa Renee Vandekamp on Facebook or Jexa Renee Vandesnatch and Sarah De Taco Mayo are over it. Oh, that is. Or the Drag Official. The Drag <laughs> Official. Yeah, I remember that. That was a long time ago. Good to you. Um, I'm a lot of Vagine. You can probably find me by just by Googling the word Vagine. V-A-H-J-E, and just make sure that safe search is on, okay? <laughs> Trust. That's a huge Vagine. <laughs> um, I am on Tumblr at all the Vagine, none of the calories, .tumblr.com. It's mostly just memes and dicks, so be prepared for that. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at the Lady Alada, or just um, type the word Vagine into Facebook. So overfish. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys even looking at? <laughs> it's our Jack Sarah Day Vanda Snatch and Sarah Day Takamaya are over it. Oh my page. god. I'm so <laughs> overfish. <laughs> you have 62 likes. Ew. Ew. <laughs> Is that more so than our house? I'm now? so triggered. <laughs> um, my, my, again, my name is Ariel Alice. You can follow me at, do not search that because you will not find me. Um, you can find me on Instagram at my boy name, at Mermaid Antony. No H in the name. And, or find me on Facebook at Anthony Ariel Alice Damaro, or like the Solana Dace Facebook page, and then find me through that, and then come see me and have me do your hair. Yes, please. Anyway. Anthony does amazing haircuts. <laughs> My hair is done by Anthony right now. Nobody fucking read me. I will cry. <laughs> Should have had, had like a meeting. Like, done your hair. To <laughs> City. Um, and Sorry. then you guys are gonna have a show. <laughs> A oh. show. Oh, yeah. In March. March. Yes, March, March 25th. March 25th at Resonator in Norman. It's going to be the Resonator. House. No, at Resonator in Norman. It's oh. 110, 110 North University Avenue. No, or just 1010. 1010. You said 110, 110. Oh, sorry. 1010 North University <laughs> Avenue. Resonator in Norman. March 25th. Be there every square. And you can find more information at House Down Productions, H A U S Down Productions, on Facebook. We are all also available on the corner of Penn and 24th between the hours of 6 p.m. and 3 a.m. <laughs> yes! Absolutely. Yes. You can find Crystal Beth on um, Craigslist. Exactly. <laughs> so all the time. And all you of y'all on Grinder. You can find me on Ashley Madison because I'm married. And I'm on Grindr. Grindr. Yeah. Yeah. You can find me on MillionaireMatchmaker.com. No. <laughs> FarmersOnly.com. <laughs> Shout out to Chase. Okay. Shout out to Brian. Shout Nobody out to Kinzada. I love you, Mom. <laughs> shout uh, out to my bio, Mom. <laughs> no, no boyfriend shout out? No, I'm good. <laughs> oh! Oh, 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 mine okay. wasn't a boyfriend shout out. Was shout out to both out. of my dogs. Yeah, shout out will. to uh, my boyfriend Todd and my cat Persephone. They okay. put up with a lot of shit. Weasley, Bella, and Sirius <laughs> and Regulus. I love you. <laughs> Oh shout out to God. Shout out to Chloe, who is also in the production. Thank God. And porcelain. Trying to be here in <laughs> porcelain. So <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you guys uh, for being here. Um, thank you for having join. us. Yeah. Uh, I am Santiago Ramones. You can find everything that I do on my website, SantiagoRamones.com. <laughs> I make music, which you can find on there, and you will also find this podcast, which I end with my three things. Love never